Today, more on the Ohio train derailment. A prestigious medical center backs a bill that would fund child genital mutilation. And will my voice hold up the entire show? We don't know, but we're going to find out about that and much more. And it all starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez. Happy Made Up Consumerism Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, I am spending Valentine's Day with Alex Stein, Blaze TV host of Primetime with Alex Stein. Yeah, wait, no, Valentine's Day is a holiday based on love. And as a lover myself, no, this is one oh, of my God. favorite holidays because this is, you know, oftentimes I'm able to spend the night with the lady. And well, this is often when they're most, uh, you know, I guess we'd say frisky. So, yeah, I love this holiday and I wish every day was Valentine's Day. Great. Off to a great start. Uh, also joined by Michael Malice, author of The White Pill and host of You're Welcome. And yes, it is spelled like that correctly. I am also a lover of hatred. That is absolutely true. Lover of hatred? Yeah, I know. that's he's Michael. An anarchist. That's he loves, true. He's, he, loves, he loves chaos a he lot does. like me. He does love chaos. Um, all right, so I want to get into the uh, what's going on with this train over in East Palestine. You, say pa you said Palestine the other day. I feel like it should be Palestine. Well, I think it's not Alex Stein. Yeah, but I think we say. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I that's don't know. True. I think it's named after Palestine is it? in Israel, I, right? I think so too. Yeah. So. Is it okay? Yeah. All right. Or, so East Palestine. You know, we're tackling the big things here. Like, how do you pronounce? But you can East say in Palestine, Texas, you say Ohio. howdy, y'all. You say hey, because we know. Yeah, people, I know, but there's a place in Texas called, called Lake, and we say yeah, a lot of times Palestine. We say, yeah, we say Palestine because yeah. we're Texas and white trash, and that's not because that's the Wait, way. I'm not white trash. I'm not white I, trash. Well, I am. I uh, yeah, I am. So I'm being told by the control room that it is Palestine. Oh really? That's what they're Alex telling me. Alex Palestine. Okay, listen, tomato, tomato, let's go. Who says tomato? So, okay, so <laughs> so it's been 11 days now since this trail derailment, train derailment, and we still don't have any real answers. Um, you know, you might look to Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, uh, who finally came out late, late last night and and. He came Spoke. out. Congratulations for him! <laughs> well, wow, he's, I was. I, he came yeah, out ever straight. Since, ever since he got married to a dude, I was had my suspicions. <laughs> you were wondering. Yeah. Yeah, and then the whole like paternity leave thing. You were yeah, like, maybe. Saying, well, paternity leave doesn't mean anything. Well, but I mean, he was chest feeding. Oh yeah. You know, I guess maybe I don't know if that works out, but um, so he was speaking yesterday at the National Association of Counties conference in D.C. and. It, yesterday was 10 days since it. We were finding out all of these chemicals, these really, really bad toxic chemicals that were burning and all of the potential side effects. We're seeing videos coming out of all the wildlife just totally dead in the water. Um, this can't be good. And so Transportation Secretary B Pete Buttigieg, uh, he doesn't really talk about that, but instead he's talking about a really big problem plaguing um, America, which is white construction workers. Watch to work with your contractors, uh, to work with your community colleges on building a workforce that reflects the community. We have heard way too many stories from generations past of infrastructure where you got a, a neighborhood, often a neighborhood of color, that finally sees the project come to them, but everyone in the hard hats on that project looking like, uh, uh, you know, doing, doing the good paying jobs, don't look like they came from anywhere near the neighborhood. Right. You can build community wealth that will help close wealth ga gaps in this country if we can tear down those barriers. But that happens at the delivery level. Michael looks like his head is about to explode. <laughs> no, I mean, we heard so much during 2020 that this kid is like the next, the wonderkind. You would think if anyone knew how to run a train, it would be Pete Buttigieg. This is just absolutely ridiculous that this is the first time in history I was gonna say that they're not blaming either racism or climate change, and well, guess I was wrong. You were wrong. You were wrong. You j you had to wait just a second. <laughs> yeah. And then they were gonna blame racism. Well, in a way, you can tie everything back to racism, and I tend to agree with them that you know this is based in racism. This country was built by slavery, so uh, in essence, he's exactly correct. My favorite. I'm gonna ignore you. My favorite Pete Buttigieg moment is when they um, he parked 
in his big giant suburban a couple blocks away from where he wanted to go and they pulled out the bicycle <laughs> and he took the bicycle out so that it would look like he was actually biking around the city but he actually just rode his no, the giant best SUV Pete there. The judge moment was when he was at the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin looking at his husband with come hither eyes and his husband posted it on Twitter talking about I'm married to this hunk while he's surrounded by the memorial. No. You can pull up the photo, look it up, uh, P. Buttigieg Holocaust, and it's just insane. No. Yes, that's no. the moment. Yes. Yeah, and I believe he ate a piece of pizza really weird. You know, have you guys seen that photo? You know, was that he, him? It was him. He's eating like a piece of pizza very weird. So he's a very unusual guy that supposedly chest feeds. His nipple has milk. And <laughs> as another person that has a milky nipple, I tend to actually kind of vibe with Pete a lot of the time. I feel like if you have a milky nipple, you should probably go to the doctor. It's or it take is, some aromacin. Well, they <laughs> say it's an infection, but, you know, I'm anti-pharmaceutical industrial complex. So I refuse to take antibiotics, so... They're just milking. They've been like this for about three months. And they're not bloody, though, so the doctor said, you know, it's similar to what a horse has. Well, when, you got to give it a month, then you'll be, that'll be No, bloody. it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Don't worry. My nipples are fine. So He I, had blood shooting out of his whatever. I, it's, there's not that bloody, so next oh, question. Boy. Let's go. Keep going. I, so Keep it I, judge. Yeah, yeah, well, I want to, so as he's talking about, he's, you know, of course, blaming the, the, the big problem is actually white construction workers. <laughs> he also, in the same breath, uh, blames the American infrastructure on, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic watch. It's had its challenges. Right. Uh, I mean, if you look at what the American transportation systems have faced in the last two or three years, partly because of the pandemic, we've faced issues from container shipping to airline cancellations. Mm -hmm. Now we got balloons. That's right. Um, <laughs> That's funny. Ha, 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 We have balloons and we're not telling the American public what they are. Ha, 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 ha. It's really, really funny that we're, we're not being transparent with anyone. It could be a PSYOP. It could be like another country who's going to come take us over and we can welcome our Chinese or overlords. Ha, 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 ha. It's all very funny. We're just going to joke about it. Yeah, I, I, I don't really have anything to add. <clears throat> like, I just, I don't know. Here's my question with Pete Buttigieg. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm going to get my tinfoil hat on, like, because this is clear deep state. Yeah. When you're like the mayor of a city that even people in Indiana can't find the map, what gives you the idea that you're in a position to run for president? And then the fact that you could actually get some traction is telling me that there's a lot more of this stuff behind the scenes than we're being, am I crazy? Well, he's gay. Yeah, so but there's lots of him, gay people. No, that are, makes him qualified because he's gay. Yeah, but there's lots of gay uh, politicians who would never. Tammy Baldwin is the yeah, senator for many years of, of Michigan or Minnesota, whatever one, Wisconsin rather. To be fair, Pete Buttigieg is the gayest, and so that's why <laughs> I don't he think. Was I think he gets a lot gayer than him. Uh, well, I don't know about publicly gayer than him. Maybe privately gayer, but publicly he is considered one of the gayest uh, politicians. You've, to been, exist. you've been to CPAC. It goes. The dial goes to eleven. <laughs> well, like I said, neither he's straight. He's gay. He's the gayest, in my opinion. Other people. Have different opinions, you know. Yeah, that's fair. So, well, but I mean, look, what was it? Uh, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. It had what five hundred and fifty billion dollars for roads. Yeah, and that bridges was the whole point. That was their big win. That's like, this is the trillion yeah. dollars. At, you're right. This is literally like this is the one thing that there was like bipartisan. This is not political infrastructure. Who can argue against infrastructure? That's the one thing they were supposed to throw money at. That was like non-controversial. Right. I know. It was like <laughs> that's so oh my. Because remember, the Democrats were like, abortion is infrastructure. Healthcare is infrastructure. <laughs> like right. everything was yes. infrastructure. And then the Republicans actually went along with it and spent more of our money on BS, and now they're like, well, the problem is that... Um, Back in the day, it right. was white construction workers. Right, yeah. right. Well, and but I mean, this is wow. just like Obamacare as well, right? Remember they promised us that Obamacare was going to solve the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, um, all of the system, healthcare yeah. problems, and if we could just pass it, we have to, we have to pass it so we can find out what's in it, and then we did, and if you like your doctor, you can keep it. Oops, actually, no, you can't, <laughs> but they said that this was going to solve all of our problems, and here, even today, this year, we have Joe Biden standing up, giving his State of the Union address, and saying... We have all these problems in, in the healthcare system that I have to solve. It's like, but, hold on. Well, in Joe Biden's defense, he thinks he's campaigning in 2007. So okay, let's, that's, let's, let's be fair. All right, that's fair. But in my defense, <laughs> there are a lot of problems to, that still remain in the healthcare system because they didn't fix it, which any of us could have told you when we read the bill. I will say, just for reference point, I am technically still a licensed insurance broker. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I don't actively practice anymore, but um, I am a licensed insurance broker, and I was at that time, I, I owned a brokerage firm, and I'm looking at, at this bill, and I'm like, 
This is going to do no anyone who has taken this all of the schooling that is required to go into insurance could read that and know this is going to do nothing but bad things for the industry. And yet they passed it. So I'm just saying it's just frustrating because they constantly are like, oh, you know what? I've got the idea. We're going to spend way more of your money and we're going to fix all your problems. And then it doesn't happen. And then they're like, no, you know what? We we're going to try something new. We're going to take more of your money and we're going to save all of your problems. And it, it just did never happen. I think we should let her talk as much as possible because by the end of the show, she and might be full Peter Brady. Oh, by her voice? No. Yeah. You're so mean. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, the, the federal government is the most dysfunctional organization in the world. So for them to even think that they can fix our infrastructure, what, you like the federal government? I, the two choices aren't I like them in the most dysfunctional in the world. Those <laughs> well, are I not think, the options. I'm well, an I would, anarchist. I, would, no, I do not like the federal government. I would think that the federal government is just very dysfunctional if they, they're going to, you know, solve the health care crisis. Yeah, right. You know, if they're going to even fix our roads. Yeah, right. I mean, it, it's basically run by evil pedophile lizards. What? Yeah, but well, they want the dysfunction because that gives it, like, they want... Yeah. Crime because yes. then you. Well, I mean, yes. I they guess want chaos they're, if they're because big daddy government is there yes. to save you. Then they are effective in purposely destabilizing our yes, world and making it course. terrible. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to push back on you a little bit. What? You like the federal government? Those no, the I hate that. <laughs> no, okay, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. What's with this binary choice you keep? Okay, talking? well they're dysfunctional, so you no, think no, no, they're no. But you said something about the government can't uh, solve the healthcare problems. Yes. But you've previously said that you. There you, should be caps and there should be stuff on medication. Yeah, I don't think insulin should cost two hundred dollars in Texas and two dollars in Mexico. But you're not for full like socialized. No, healthcare. not necessarily free. But I mean, we should have affordable health care. I don't think that's like that crazy. I don't think an ambulance should affordable cost. Affordable does not have a meaning in reality. Right. It yeah. just means I like it. Well, listen, because we're one no, of the. You listen. We, we, listen, in all the other countries, they're not even allowed to run pharmaceutical ads. Ads in America, they are. So we just have a corrupt pharmaceutical industry that needs to actually. I don't think the government should be involved in anything. But if they are, you know, instead of shutting down oil and gas refineries, they need to freaking go after the pharmaceutical companies that are, are just totally bleeding Are you dry. against the First Amendment? I don't understand. What? You're saying these other countries don't allow pharmaceutical ads. Like, how are you going to ban pharmaceutical ads? Well, I think that just Amendment? shows you that, that, that the pharmaceutical uh, industry is toxic or not good for society. That's why they ban those ads in those countries. But, I, I mean, banning... And we allow it. Wait, so that you want us to be more like France? Is that what you're saying? I think that they, that when it comes to the medical industrial complex, yeah, I want them to have less control because I don't think they care about people. I think they want to keep people sick. So you like, are you vaccinated, Michael? You like the... It's my health care choices are no one's business. Okay, my regardless, own. well, I think that they're giving people a bioweapon that's like giving children myocarditis. I'm not arguing with that at all. Yeah, so I would think they're an evil corporation. So if they're going to run commercials, I don't think they should. If that's going to give more kids myocarditis. Evil companies have as much right to run ads and pay for ads as everybody else. Well, you know, potato, potato. I just think that's No one uh, says potato either. <laughs> I, well, I, I don't like the pharmaceutical industrial complex. I just think that I think that what that is telling, that's just an analogy for it shows you that they're evil because these other countries realize that, but America is I not don't think to. these other countries realize squat. I think well, then they're why all don't they let them run pharmaceutical I think, ads? I think all these other countries are inferior to America, period, number one. And number two is... You think every country in the world is inferior to America? Yes, it's yes, not even close. I do. Okay. But where I are do. you? No, I well, just go back to MSNBC where you belong. I don't, know if, I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I, I do mean, I think that's say true. China. I think China right now is probably killing America in a lot of industry. But they still are inferior in every way. No, no, no. They're a world superpower. I mean, they, they also use like, they also use slaves. To exactly right. That's why they have an advantage, and all their kids are not being transitioned socially. They have a better social system. All their kids are not getting yeah, transgender. Their kids are getting murdered. They're not cutting off their kids' breasts. They're not they're, giving mastectomy. So I would they're say drowning they're, them. Yeah, and they. they were for talking a while about the Uyghur Muslims. Letting, no, yeah. talking about. The I'm not saying children. China. I'm not saying I want to move to China. I'm just saying that's all we heard. Effectively, they own the most American farmland. You know more than uh, you know any other country. So I think that they're dominating us. Americans in a lot of own more American you, farmland than China. Yeah, does. but you, we don't own as much farmland in China as they own. I don't want farmland in. China. China. Well, do you understand? So you're telling me that you don't think China is a world superpower? That's that not what we should I said at all. I, I think they're, they're our biggest threat. When they have balloons flying over us, they could have they weapons. They wouldn't be a threat we're not if they were better than us. They'd be it. our superiors. Yeah, do you, have to be better, do you have to be better than us to put a, a bomb on a balloon? No. So that's what I'm saying. So I just don't think, I just think we should be a little harder on China. I think they're a big threat. So that's why I don't know necessarily if we go into war with China, if it's a slam dunk win. If we couldn't beat the Taliban, you say we're the best country, but in 20 years. I don't want to go to war. And I'm saying in 20 years in the Middle East, we couldn't even defeat the Taliban, the world's greatest army. So to me, if that's reflective of what our country is, I don't know if our country is the, the world's you know, greatest superpower. The greatest army is the one that keeps its citizens safe on its shore, between its shores. And that is what the American army does effective extremely well. Yeah, but what about the millions of Muslims that died? The, 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 you know, the children, you know, like when we were leaving Afghanistan, you know, multiple children were bombed. Do you think they deserve to die? 
I don't, don't think anyone I, deserves to die. That's well, just, kind of a disingenuous question. What right? do you mean? I'm just saying that's not good. I don't think that that's a good way to just bomb weddings and funerals. So to say we're the best military and we're killing children, or you look at the Baka Bazi, you know, in, in All right, the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reel this back in, okay? Oh, I'm just I, saying. You're trying well, to you say Americans are great, this. America's so perfect. I think America's so perfect. That's not what he said. He, that's okay. not what he so said. So you think it's the best? It's the best. I mean, right. we have different opinions. We're allowed to have different opinions. You are I don't allowed agree. to You are allowed to We don't have to agree. You do not have the right to say America's not the best country in the world with a straight face. I'm not on this network. Okay, so I'm going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... And the audience is going to back me second. up in the comments. I will say, how we got started on this was talking about the pharmaceutical companies, and I would just like to tie this up with a little yes. bow and say that, to my point, Obamacare did nothing to solve anything going on in the pharmaceutical companies. It was, it was all the insurance carriers, yes. right? It did nothing, nothing yes. to cap any of these pharmaceutical companies, right? Okay. So... Um, I want to add a couple other things to this story before I have to uh, take a break here because I just want to just state for the record, um, the residents over in Ohio who have, I can't even tell you, like they can't return to their homes, okay? Um, they don't know if their homes are ever going to be safe and what are they going to do? Sell their property because who's going to buy it? It's basically Chernobyl. So they're screwed and the government has not come in. Um, they've not seen any financial help, help from FEMA. Uh, they've even gone so far as to create a petition to declare their city a federal emergency disaster zone so they can receive federal FEMA aid. They've had like 4,000 people who have signed their petition. And I just think that it's really, really sad that Joe Biden wants to send billions of dollars to Ukraine. I, Michael, no disrespect, but you're spending billions of dollars sending aid to Ukraine and you can't even be bothered to come to Ohio and send the government to Ohio to make sure that your own citizens are taken care of. No disrespect, what are you, you talking, because I was born in Ukraine? Yeah. I, I'm I an American make, citizen, well, I don't I speak wanted, Ukrainian. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. I saw her. I felt very disrespected though, Okay. despite what you just said. Good, you know what, now I'm glad. Um, Happy right. Valentine's Day, <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> we gotta take a quick break. We will be back with more, but first we wanna thank our sponsor, Birch Gold. So uh, the United States already blew through their uh, $31.4 trillion debt ceiling in January. Congratulations, everyone. And they still refuse to reduce spending. They've clearly got their heads buried in the sand when it comes to fiscal responsibility. So it's time to pull your head out of the sand. And I'm just saying, you should just look at diversifying into gold with Birch Gold. Uh, gold has been king historically in times of you know uncertainty, instability, and gold is there. It's dependable. And Birch Gold makes it really easy to convert an IRA or 401k into an IRA with precious metals. All you need to do is text the word Y, that's W-H-Y, to 989898. They're going to send you a free information kit on diversifying with gold and silver. And then you can talk to one of their precious metal specialists if you'd like. But I'm just saying, okay, you've got your retirement accounts. You've got your, you know, uh, retirement nest egg. You don't just want to watch it squander away if you don't have to. So you can protect yourself with gold today by texting the word Y to 989898. So in this segment, I'm going to see if I can get the two of these to actually physically duke it out. I don't know. We'll see. But um, it's Valentine's Day. Well, yeah, I know. That's a that's perfect why day to fight. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Day, yeah. over, over this beautiful woman. <laughs> so uh, the Maryland House and Senate have a bill in the legislature that would require the medical assistance program to pay for all sex reassignment treatments for those using Medicaid. So this is, um, I'm going to show you guys a, an email. This is a recent email sent to staff. Uh, from Johns Hopkins University and Johns Hopkins Medicine. They stated their support of this Maryland bill that would expand the types of, this is what they call, medically necessary gender-affirming treatments covered by the state's Medicaid program, including puberty blockers for children. Um, so it, and this is, this one is like very, very, very extensive. So <clears throat> puberty blockers for children, hormone therapy, hair alteration, voice alterations and therapy, mastectomies, breast augmentations, laser scar treatments, genital surgeries, and fertility preservation surgeries, among others. Wait, wait breast augmentation? Like, wait, who's, Yes, who that's why I'm saying, like, can possible? I just, uh, I'll just identify oh, as, Oh, male like, to female, okay, got it. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'll just identify as, like, gender fluid and be like, hey, can I, can, I'm here for my free breast augmentation, can I get it? Right? Are we allowed to comment on that? I'm scared. Yeah, you are, dude. <laughs> I don't want to comment on your boobs. Well, I, you don't have to comment on... I'm saying comment on the idea that someone could just go in there and do it, right? Because why yeah. is it fair okay, that a man can get breast gonna, augmentation? You're going to think I'm being difficult and contrarian. And I you swear are. To you, I, mm -hmm. I already sure. know you are. But I, I, this is my honest opinion. This, to me, is really such an issue where conservatives are being distracted by the forest for the trees. I don't think we should have Medicare or Medicaid at all, right? Mm. 
And it is true, like this amount that's gonna add to that budget in Maryland is gonna be so statistically small to the gigantic amount that is being spent by governments for healthcare, <clears throat> which result in driving up healthcare costs massively for everyone else, including the poorest of the poor, that I think this is just like, it's almost like how magicians use misdirection, right? Like they'll dangle the keys and the conservatives yell the sparkly keys because yeah, this is kind of outrageous that you're gonna have hormone blockers for kids paid for by the taxpayer. I don't disagree. But at the same time, like if you worry about this like 1% of the, of the budget, you're not worrying about the bigger issue, which is the 99% of the budget was completely uh, invalid and, and outrageous. I mean, I think you can worry about both, though, but I right? Think, but because it's, but it's harder to, to completely upend the Medicaid system than it is to just push your legislators to vote no on this particular bill. But I don't agree because I think it's easy to, it's equally easy. You get outraged over this bill or you get outraged over the program. It's the same amount of momentum. Let's get momentum on the whole principle that everyone has to be paying for everyone else's uh, health care issues. Mm. No, I think it's really bad those state-sponsored mastectomies. I mean, whether it's a distraction or not, I don't think there's a bigger issue than that, like cutting off a child's breast. I mean... It's child abuse. There, there is a much bigger issue, which is this uh, medic a medical child. assisted suicide, which is coming mm -hmm. down the pike, which I'm extremely concerned. Well, that's concerned. in Canada. I mean, no, that's happening that's, here, state by state. But in a way, in a way, you can almost say, I'm just saying the rates of, of suicide after a person transitions, you're almost basically just in, ensuring that they are going to have some sort of si suicidal tendencies or suicidal actions if you, if you let them transition. Th that's not technically accurate, but even so, the number of people who are transitioning is going to be a very small percentage. So, so more trans people don't commit suicide, is what you're saying? What I'm saying is that when people trans, <coughs> the read Deborah Sell's book, The End of Gender, when people transition, that's often a useful mechanism to resolve this. It depends on the individual. Point being, trans people are a very small percent of the population, right? So if we're talking about things that are going to be deleterious, I'm much more concerned about normalization of medical assisted suicide because if conservatives are right about anything, it's the slippery slope. And once you have that loss of sanctity of life and people are just People are just killing themselves because they're elderly and lonely in these other countries. Mm -hmm. This, to me, is far more disturbing, uh, although this is very disturbing as well, I'm not going to lie. But that is something that is much more pervasive, and that just speaks to the decay of, of society on a far bigger level. Well, I, so then, I, I, to your point, I want to let's talk about the, the medical community, the medical industrial complex, let's call yeah. it, okay? And, and just how far they've fallen because you just mentioned, right? They're supposed to do no harm, and now we've got doctors who are like trying to glamorize. I mean, you guys saw the, the ad that was in Canada. They're trying to glamorize killing yourself, really. Um, and so you've got that. You've got, let's take Johns Hopkins, for instance, that we just talked about, who A, want to help fund, you know, irreversible, potentially irreversible damage to children. Also, they're the same ones who hired that one professor who, you know, wants to treat pedophiles as well, don't worry, they're just minor attracted persons. We don't want to stigmatize, you know, uh, statutory rape. Um, so we'll call them minor attracted persons. I mean, it just, there's so much decay just within the medical complex. How do you write that ship? Because it just feels like the entire thing is rotting. And I don't even know, I mean, they're, they're all over there like circle jerking themselves. So who, like, who, who corrects that? You know how this gets solved in one generation? When, I'm not joking, when Texas regains its independence and becomes a republic, and you can leave the other 49 states to wither on the vine. Because I don't think there's any way for us or for most Americans to steer that ship from Los Angeles in New York and Seattle. I think they're mm. a lost cause at this point. I know there's a lot of people who watch this network who are patriots who are like, I'm not giving up an inch of this country. Good luck. If you couldn't get back Kabul, it's gonna be easier to get, back, get Kabul excuse me, than to get New York City or to get uh, San Francisco. You, yeah. have to res you have to respect like the the the, the sentiment though, right? Oh, of course. Because I go back and forth. I, t I tell people all the time, I'm like, what are you still doing in California? Get the hell out of California if you're still there. And I get people all the time who are like, we just want to save it. And I'm like, and, God and bless if, you. That's if really you're, noble. If but. you're a shrink in California and a kid comes to you with issues about gender, and you in any way be like, well, wait this out, maybe it's this, maybe you're you know, a feminine gay man, maybe you're a tomboy, something like that. If you steer them in that direction, you can lose your license. Mm -hmm. You're only allowed to steer them towards the trans direction. And that is such a crazy uh, uh, handcuffs to be putting on yeah. these people. It, I can't even begin to talk yeah. about it. Well, well Boston, Boston Children's Hospital uh, said that they love gender dysphoria. Well, they didn't say it in that terms because they have a lifelong patient. So that's why they like this is because now they have patients for life as soon as they identify as one sex is they're gonna be on some sort of pharmaceutical and then you know, maybe they'll get some sort of state-sponsored uh, gender reassignment surgery. So I think for the for-profit capitalist, uh, you know, medical industrial complex, why wouldn't they like to get young children as lifelong patients? Well, but so what's the alternative? You mentioned the for-profit medical industrial complex. Maybe not state-sponsored, uh, you know, gender reassignment surgery. 
make it more expensive, that would you know, that would make guess, it more profitable. That's still profit, though. Well, I'm just saying, making it less accessible, so these hospitals, what they're going to do is, it's like the vaccine, how it's free. You know, they just they. Somebody's making money on it, so they can still make money on it by subverting and making the state pay for it because it's such like a niche thing. So yeah. I think stopping that would be a huge thing. Legislation that stops that. Yeah, I just it's difficult to see our way out of this when, like I said, you know, it's like well, you mentioned they're making a lot of money off of it. They're all it's all these people in academia. Like, yes, you're right, and yes, we're we're doing that. We're we can play God. We know how, to, you know, we know what to do better than these parents, better than these kids. We're going to tell them what to do. And if you don't have anyone in the medical community who's able, as Michael pointed out, in California, you're not allowed to say, hey, maybe we shouldn't be doing this, right? So it's like, how do we get someone who's high enough in the medical community to finally stop this and say, we can't be recommending this to people anymore. It can only happen legislatively. And, and yeah. the way that happened is like in Texas, yeah. which this law makes no sense. Whereas like if, if Alex gives you an abortion, I can sue, even though I'm not involved in any way, right? There's no standing. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a, a prominent Texas attorney. I'm like, th this doesn't make sense. He goes, yeah, it doesn't really make sense on a state level, but like it kind of works. So if that's the case where like, if, if you're uh, Alex's daughter and he takes you to gender assignment surgery and I can get involved somehow as a third party, maybe it's legally crazy, but it will get the job done. If yeah, I'm like, who cares? The same thing with abortion. I'm like, I mean, are we saving babies? Great. I'm, and I'm, I'm okay very glad that. you all recognize that the law is really inherently meaningless and is whatever the people in power say it is, because that is the anarchist perspective. <laughs> so welcome um, to anarchism. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Pure Health. So I do, you know, I like wine. So I'm just going to say, like, I feel like it's it's very important to take care of my liver mm -hmm. personally. Maybe some of you guys out there, why are you laughing so hard, Michael? Why are you laughing so hard? you're drunk right now. I can smell no. it on your breath. Don't start rumors. I'm not. That's not a it's just that's water tea. and tea. Yeah, Thank that's you. That's vodka. That is not vodka. She's three that is deep. The last thing I want right now. Uh, you the want latest gym? data from the American Heart Association indicates that adults with fatty liver are 3.5 times more likely to have heart failure than those without. The American Liver Foundation says that 100 million Americans have fatty liver, which means there are many of you that are at risk. Remember, your livers are going to detoxify, so they, we're throwing everything at them. Uh, cholesterol, alcohol, toxins, Tylenol, cigarettes, statins. Uh, that's why so many of us have a sluggish fatty liver that makes you potentially gain weight and lose energy. For decades now, your liver has helped you with over 500 key functions every day. Help your liver out, all right? There is a solution, Liver Health Formula. It's all natural. It contains 12 clinically proven botanicals that help recharge and protect your liver. It's manufactured right here in the United States, not in China, and approved by American doctors. So if you're looking to ignite your fat-burning metabolism, boost your energy, and transform how you look and feel, try Liver Health Formula, and you will receive five free gifts when you order today. You're going to receive a free bottle of blood sugar formula to reduce sugar cravings. Uh, you're going to get four free ebooks to support every aspect of your health. You got to go try it. It is getliverhelp.com/news. That is getliverhelp.com/news. So um, another Blaze TV contributor, John Doyle. He mm -hmm. comes on this program, and he is Gen Z, and he is constantly like, "My generation is literally the worst. I mean, we're just." the worst at everything. You, okay, you disagree. So let me give you the story. And then I want I want you guys, I want to have a, again, I didn't see any physical confrontation in the last, so I'm just saying, you know, you have another shot at this. So Gen Z, uh-oh, Michael's got a, Pen <laughs> Michael's pencil. got a stabbing. He's a lot bigger than me. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so Gen Z, you know, we know that they're staying home longer, right? They're also not getting driver's licenses. So this is a new report that claims that the generation, this is 1996 through 2012, they're not getting their licenses because of fear, anxiety, finances, and even environmental concerns, they say. So 1997, 43% of those aged 16 had driver's licenses. 62% of 17-year-olds had driver's licenses. And uh, 1997, uh, the rate was nearly 90% for 20 to 25 year olds compared to 2020 when the number went down to 80% and it just keeps dropping. Um, 16 year olds with licenses dropped by nearly 20%. Wow. And yeah, they're like, well, I mean, I, I just didn't feel like I, I needed it. I'm a very anxious person. Driving seems intimidating. I've tried it. There's, this is a high school senior from Boston. I've tried it and it just feels very hard. 
That's what she said. No, uh, you know, this is really kind of sad if you really think about it. It's because, a big problem. Well, this, for me. <laughs> How is it a big problem? This is the, like, who's going to take care of the country? Yeah, no, this is a huge, us. this is a oh. huge problem because for me, I, I got, I, 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 think the, I think the driving was the well, issue. No, okay. yeah, no they're too scared yeah, to no, drive. Right, right. On my 15th birthday, my dad and I went to the DMV, or we call it DPS here, uh, and I got a hardship license. My dad said that I had to take him to the hospital because he had, like, debilitating diabetes, which wasn't the case. <laughs> and we basically got a hardship license because so I could drive at 15. I actually took, got, like, a permit so I could take driver's ed. At 14, what I'm saying is there's nothing more than I wanted in the world in my license. It was a key to the freaking world. Right, so, well, right. The fact that these people don't want their car. Yeah, yeah it, was I, like the whole, it was my whole life like, yeah. having a license in a car. I, I just turned 56 weeks ago, and I still don't have my license because I lived in New York City all my life. Oh, wow. You have an excuse. Wait, so you don't drive around Austin? I also, it's like so oh, weird wow. that you, you don't look I also See, I know how to ride weird. a bike. I'm not even kidding. So you don't even rent what? a car? You don't ride a bike? What about See, swim? Do you know how to swim? Very poorly. My dad, no, was, like, my dad was like a water polo champion. He tried to get me to swim, and then I had to, this one time I had to compete, and it was, I had a breakdown as a situation. Oh, wow. No. We can I tell don't that talk he had emotion. fear and anxiety oh, wow. about yeah, it. Well, not about the car, about the about swimming, and it was warranted. Yeah. I was so bad they had me with the younger kids. Oh, oh no. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so, so I would say if you live in a big city like New York where everyone uses right. public transportation or whatever, you kind of get a pass on that. But Austin, <laughs> how do you get around Uber? I guess yeah, Uber and Lyft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, do you have I'm any? Just, do you have any intention on? No, as soon as I finish my book rollout, I'm going to get a, a driving instructor, and I'm going to get a, a two. So cars. you don't know how to drive a car at all? Well, I've <clears throat> driven a car like a few times, like in college. Doesn't have a license. I don't have a license, license. Oh, so I know the mechanics. Wow. Right. Yeah. It, but but he's go, he has a plan to get his Correct. driver's license because yes. now he is here in Texas, where we're all spread out. I'm yeah. talking about people who have like environmental concerns and are just too intimidated but by getting me, behind uh, Let wheel. me ask this, and I think you're gonna agree with me. I think a lot of times people latch <clears> onto <throat> politics to validate what they were gonna do anyway. So like what COVID did is allow people who are mm. like, neurotic and an anxious to externalize, oh, it's not because I'm a mess, it's because mm -hmm. of the plague. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. a lot of these kids who are like basket cases, like, oh, I, oh I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm a basket case, it's the environment. Right. So I, I don't really buy that it's the environment because then they'd be like, I'm only gonna drive an electric car, but they're not saying that either. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Or you have the the people who, and maybe this is not Gen Z, but it's maybe the generation behind them who weren't going to be neurotic, but COVID made yeah, them neurotic, of course, right? You grew up because like that, yeah. yeah, you're telling all of these young kids like, you gotta, oh my God, wash your hands. You gotta use hand sanitizer. Put this mask on. You can't breathe the air. The air is toxic, and you might die if you breathe it. Like, I'm actually very concerned about the generation behind Gen Z. I'm of concerned that. what we're gonna call them. We're out of letters. <laughs> Well, I think this goes back to the pharmaceutical industrial complex that oftentimes without very much information will just prescribe SSRIs to children, yeah, giving awful. them mm -hmm. more anxiety. So I think that children are more, uh, they're over medicated and oftentimes whether the medicine works or not, now they have some sort of, you know, thing that they feel is a diagnosed issue. So it even makes their, you know, whatever their self-esteem lower because they feel like, oh, I, I'm, I'm diagnosed with clinical depression. So I think that we're over medicated and that is another reason for kids to have anxiety. Uh, Anxiety and justified anxiety at that. But I gotta yeah. ask because I think I know the answer. But I want to hear your story. When you were growing up, did they tell you had ADHD? And oh, I have the worst. Yeah, they yeah. had me on Ritalin, Adderall, all of it. I was. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. You know, it's, it was good. It really it 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 is. Not funny. Little, it is not. little boys are being little boys, and they just want them to yeah. be little robots. I, <laughs> right. I find that very disturbing. I'm well, sorry. sit in a desk for yeah. eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. Do your I work. I can't do that. Yeah. I know. I know, I but know. But these kids are just medicated with not only that, but just, you know, all sorts of uh, antidepressants, SSRIs. They just give pills. Like I said, very few diagnoses. Your general practitioner who's not a psychologist or a psychiatrist will give you l literal uh, SSRIs, Prozac, Lamictal, whatever it is. These are serious and, medications and the other for thing, mental health. And when they're not, that's not even their qualifications. And if you're like f five, six, seven, eight, whatever, you're all taking these brain medications, you're on the road to self-medicating with drugs oh, when you're older. Because like, listen, yeah. I've been taking pharmaceuticals right. in my life. Let me just try, you know, speed or whatever else right, it is, cocaine. Right, yeah. right. It's a slippery slope in that regard too, which I find very disturbing. So I said at the beginning of this that John Doyle would say that his generation is the worst. Michael, you said no. Oh, it's the boomers, by far. Really? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to apologize. Well, they have all the wealth. The, the, the boomers are just like if you go on Twitter, it's just like, oh, I'm sorry to enter college. I guess I never learned that men and women are different. Laughing emoji, laughing in love, laughing emoji. I, I I can't deal with them. Well, I'm sorry. This is a republic, not a democracy. Tell people about something called the Constitution. Yeah, that's gonna stop the left. Just telling them about the Constitution. I can't handle it. So they're the worst. I like those memes where it's like my parents at 30 and they're like buying a house, and then it's like me at 30 and it's like a dozen of you know a dozen eggs cost 25 dollars, and they're all like spaced out. 
so yeah, I mean, the boomers had it a lot easier. I feel like financially, the value of you know, homes and properties was a lot more fair. So yeah, I mean, the boomers are terrible in that regard. I feel like they've kind of hoarded the wealth. But uh, I, honestly, the indoctrination that the young kids are growing up with, I mean, the school shootings and whatever, whether they're like you sound government like a boomer now. I know, but I'm just yeah. saying the future of the world. I, I don't know if the the cures of our <laughs> ailments rest in the future generations Correct. coming up. I agree. With that. I, well, and I but I was also reading. Um, um, a study that showed how much more prone teenage girls are to depression and suicide um, oh. than they were previously. That's, oh, that's so awful. It is. And so, and I agree with you, SSRI, I mean, the, the medical industrial complex, as we've covered extensively on the show, has done nothing good for these girls. But I also wonder how much of it is related to social media and the intense pressure what, to, like, what, be the best, fit in, get the most what likes. I am extremely disturbed about, me and Sarah are a little older than you, I'm not joking, when we were growing up, every not single really. girl we knew probably had an eating disorder at one mm -hmm. point, right? And yeah. it was just an extremely common thing. But nowadays, when you're uncomfortable with your body, and you, when we were growing up, it was an eating disorder, which is something that's often, it can be fatal, but is curable. But now it's going to be, I'm, I'm on gender fluid or I'm trans. Right. And the, uh, what their actions are going to be are things yep. that are much more irreversible than what kids our age were growing up with yep. had to deal with. Well, and that's kind of like, I said, like in the 90s, or whatever, like gender bending, like a kid could wear a dress. Not that that was good, but they wouldn't, the parents would immediately be like, cut off your breasts, you know? I'm not saying that, that was good, but now we've just gone so far. Uh, we're like, they show any sort of feminism, a male, they're like, you're a woman, or, you know, a, a female shows but, any masculinity. You're a boy, it's, just, it's gone too hormones far. Hormones are how the body regulates behavior, even in any animal, mm -hmm. including humans being an animal. So when you introduce hormones to brain activity, it's, it's uh, the idea that it's like, oh, everything's going to resolve itself is just, in every case, is just crazy to me. Yeah. I would just like to state for the record, Alex and I are very close in age. So yeah, you just we aged, are. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. aged me. We are. He's like 27. No, I'm much older than you've that. You've aged I'm me. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 29. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 29. Yeah. Thank you. And that's I'm sorry. I'm sticking to it. We're both 29. All right, we've got to take a break. We'll be right back. No, no, no. Uh, unvaccinated New York City teachers are outraged after finding out that the district uh, sent their fingerprints to the FBI with problem code flags. They filed a lawsuit against their former city employer. Um, I want to play a clip. This is uh, John Bursch, who is representing the teachers, said that the uh, the teachers who refused the shot now have a flag on their file, which obviously they go, they try to like get another job. It's going to impact their ability to get another job. Let's listen to some of that. A shocking accusation of federal overreach in New York as the city reportedly flagged the fingerprints of its unvaccinated teachers to the FBI. An attorney representing those educators is talking about it in federal court. Listen to this. When the, the city puts these problem codes on employees who have been terminated because of their unconstitutional policies, not only do they have this flag in their files, but their fingerprints are sent with that flag to the FBI and the New York Criminal Justice Services. So it impacts their ongoing ability to get employment at other places. Mm. See, these teachers uh, should have just gone and gotten a, a black market vaccination card, and then they wouldn't be... See, I don't support Al Qaeda nuking New York City, but, <laughs> and I, it's going to be very hard for me to have sympathy for public school teachers who I think are really some of the great demons is, mm -hmm. in, in our country. There uh, are good ones, right? Sure, we'll say that for the sake of argument. <laughs> but point being, this is so beyond disturbing that it's hard even for me to be glib about it. Um, and to find that you're, it's one thing to be like flagged, like, okay, this person was, they were, you know, fired for this. But other thing to be like turned into the authorities, this is like Soviet level. Um, and, and I also think the fact that the media is maybe it's reporting on it, there's none of this levels of outrage. Like there no, was no. outrage over like a doctor or a nurse who's a medical professional choosing not to get vaccinated. It's like they're ignorant, right? They're coming from an informed place. Right. So th this, I mean, God help us, we need school choice as, as quickly as possible everywhere. No kidding. Yeah, I'm just wondering what does the FBI want to do with that information? I guess, per, you know, prevent them from getting future jobs. I'm just wondering why that, why they'd even need to know why a teacher didn't get vaccinated. It sounds like the legislation is if someone is terminated that, that automatically all they of their information know, gets yeah, handed I mean, I over. I guess in case it becomes a criminal case. I'm just saying I don't understand why they would, it seems like a civil matter between the city and you know, somebody getting fired for not being vaccinated. I don't know. It's very weird. It's very invasive. Why do they have their, their fingerprints to begin with? That's, That's crazy what I'm saying. Well, I think you, as I think, an employee, you yeah, probably you, do some background <coughs> check. Where you yeah, you have to do that. Yeah. 
if you're a mm. government employee, I believe. Yeah. Oh my God. But, but they're, I mean, they're sending it to the FBI, to the DOJ. Uh, it's just so they can create a database. I'm just wondering why. It's just weird. Like, I guess so you can't get future jobs, or so. It's they... only only positive reasons for governments to have databases, right, Alex? <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, well, there. I mean, this is the same FBI and DOJ who like set up domestic terrorist codes on parents who were yeah, concerned, yeah. you know, going to their school boards. And when there's a Republican president and a Republican Congress, they're going to just give them more money. Watch. And listen, FBI... And conservatives are going to be quiet because it's going to be their guys in office. You really think? Want to bet? I'll bet you money right now. I don't want to bet money. I like money. I like to keep it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but my point is, is there, is, there a, is there a breaking point? Because I feel like the momentum is building that, that Republicans are getting so sick of it. You know, they had that gotcha moment with Ted Cruz where a media member asked him, like, so are you saying that you support defunding the FBI? As if it was like some big... He goes, yeah. And she's like... Because it's, it's like, yeah, burn the whole freaking thing to the ground. I'm sorry. Amen, is that supposed sister. to be controversial? Amen, sister. And so Actually, sing I my song. Yeah. So I like, I, now, do I think Ted Cruz actually would like follow through with that? Yeah. I don't know. But I'm just saying it feels like the timing is like they're building to something to just have them all just have that ripped away and just be like, oh, well, we're back in office. Oh, freaking well. It's just so depressing. Well, that'd be terrible because without the FBI, we wouldn't have the Waco disaster. So we need the FBI. Disaster. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the word we for it. We need the FBI for sure. Um, I, I Just briefly, yeah. tell a story. I had dinner once with uh, Ruben and a former FBI agent. I, I think it's FBI, not CA, but I'm nine percent of FBI. And he's talking about how it's illegal for, let's suppose, I'm FBI, you're my ex-girlfriend, for me to like look into your Google. But what I can do, your Gmail, I can contact my counterpart in France and have my French guy look into you, and same way I could do for that. And he's like, this is how corrupt it is. And I'm sitting there thinking like, you guys should be in prison at a minimum. Yeah. The fact yeah. that you're like, oh, these guys, isn't that a shame? I'm like, this isn't a shame. Right. This is so beyond well, what is acceptable. I don't even know where to start. Tim foil yeah. hat, this is how it works. An MI6 agent from the UK yes. can actually have operate with impunity in like France. And that's what they say is, uh, you know, is who killed Princess Diana is because it took her so long to get to the hospital after she crashed. They said there was MI6 agents, you know, operating with impunity in France and they were able to kill her. That's just a conspiracy because it took like 45 minutes from her to get to the site of the crash to a hospital and they passed a bunch of I heard way. it was Ted Cruz's dad was involved. <laughs> Maybe, he killed JFK. All right, we gotta take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we now have officially another Republican challenger to President Trump. This is uh, Nikki Haley who announced today and is already on the attack. Let's watch some of that. Some people look at America and see vulnerability. The socialist left sees an opportunity to rewrite history. China and Russia are on the march. They all think we can be bullied, kicked around. You should know this about me. I don't put up with bullies. And when you kick back, it hurts them more if you're wearing heels. I'm Nikki Haley, and I'm running for president. No, no, I don't. No, I do not endorse this message. That is so lame. I'm sorry. Can that's I, lame. Can I make a point that's going to break please. people's bubble? I hope people should please. realize this because we're kind of insiders. Haha. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times these people aren't running for president. They're yep. running to be a Fox contributor, yep. a Blaze contributor. They're running for book deals. They're running yep. for appearance fees. It's a very easy way for me to call up people. I have an excuse. They give me money. I have a travel budget. I get the money. I travel. It boosts my image. And it's just a lucrative position. And what's the downside, right? right. So it, that's exactly what's going on. I don't think she has much of a chance. Uh, I think no. the base despises her. And this whole thing, <laughs> like I could stand I up to work for bull You work for Trump. And his being a bully is like one of the best things about him. Yeah. Everybody's arguing about DeSantis and Trump. I'm going full <laughs> Nikki Haley. I'm sorry, but yeah, like I'm as fully a endorsed by primetime Alex Stein. Nikki Haley, you are my choice, baby. <laughs> I said I was going to last the whole show, and now 40 <laughs> seconds left. And I'm dying. <laughs> Just like her campaign, it's DOA. I hate that she brought up the woman thing. Well, the heels do hurt. I mean, what else? What other heels. angle does she have <coughs> that she's Indian American? I think that is interesting. No, that her I'm background. Saying, no, I'm saying like stop bringing up identity politics. But what else does she have to run on? That's the only thing that has in her, well, her resume. Well, she has experience. If she'd like to run on you it, think, I guess you she think doesn't when, want you to. She did raise her hand in that one. You meeting. think when Tim Scott announces it's going to be because of his resume? No, it's because he's a prominent black conservative. That's going to be his resume. Just, yeah. Well, we'll Nikki see. Nikki Haley. We're not going to win. 2024, Nikki Haley. You're going to be sorely disappointed. I doubt it. Doubt it.